Okay, so first video of 2020. First off, guys, I hope you enjoyed the holidays. Welcome back. Ah, oh, feels good to be back making videos. In this tutorial, we're gonna jump into Adobe XD and I'm gonna show you how you can animate a full page. So if you've ever seen those full pages, not like this, I don't know what this is. I'm having some kind of seizure with my hands. But if you've ever seen those full page animations that look really slick, don't worry, we're gonna be creating one of those in this video. Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. And in this tutorial, we're gonna jump into Adobe XD and create an awesome full page animation. You've probably seen these before on the internet, so where you scroll down a page and the animation things slide in and move. Well, in this one specifically, we're gonna be taking a full screen image, mapping it to a laptop, and then as you go back, it's gonna go full screen again. It's pretty awesome. And before we kick off the tutorial, just as a quick favor to someone from Adobe who's helped me a ton the last two years, I just wanted to let you know about the Creative Residency Program. Essentially, Adobe pay you for an entire year to kind of do your thing, that thing you love. I've got a few notes here that I'm just gonna quickly rattle off, but if you would like more information or you'd like to apply, there is a link in the video description. Okay, so it's a one year program starting May 2020. Applications are open until the 15th of January. All digital creative fields, UI, UX, illustration, photography, graphic design, one to five years work experience, participating countries, Germany, UK, US, Canada, and Japan. So yeah, that's the creative residency program, but without further ado, let's jump to the screen and get started. Rightio, so we're now in Adobe XD. We have three artboards. They're all sized at 1920 by 1080. And if we zoom into the first one, we have Mac OS Macarena, which should definitely be a thing. This is going to have a full screen background image. And when we go down here, that image will shrink to fit the laptop display. And then when we go back, it will go full screen again. We also have a headline, power is power, which is very Apple. And we're also going to have the laptop slide up here as well to reveal more of the keyboard. We have some lorem ipsum text and a buy now call to action button. So first things first, I'm gonna click on the middle one here and we do need an image to go on our screen, which I happen to have one here, ta-da. So we'll drag this into XD. There we go, oh, that's pretty big. So what we can do is hold down shift to scale this proportionally. And we can also hold down alt or option on the keyboard to scale to or from the center. So we'll scale it so that it covers the corners. And in fact, we don't actually need to hold shift because over here in the property inspector, you can see that the lock aspect ratio icon is selected. And what I actually need to do is deselect this so you can see it becomes unlinked. And now I can skew this out of shape. So I kind of need to skew this to match the perspective of the laptop. Ideally, I would distort this by bringing the bottom sides in as well, but we don't have that feature in XD yet, but this is good enough. So there we go, we've covered all of the screen. I'm gonna zoom in even more now and just hide the photo layer, select the pen tool, and now we need to define the screen. So I'm gonna do this really quickly, but please take a little bit more time and care with yours. There we go, that's the screen. And I'm just going to give this a color. It doesn't matter what color you choose because we will be using this as a mask in a moment. And I could go and name this mask if I wanted to. Nope. MCAS, let's try again. No, there we go, mask, fantastic, I can type. Okay, so now I've made my mask, I can actually show my image again, hold shift and select both the mask and the image layer. On macOS, go up to object, down to mask with shape. If you're on a PC, just right click anywhere on the artboard and then you should get the same option. Mask with shape, there we go. Now I'm gonna change this from mask group one. We'll just call this BG dash image. And it's important that this group name or this mask group name matches between artboards because that's what we will be using to auto animate. So I have this image here. What I'm gonna do is select this, go to edit and copy, or if you're on Windows, right click and select copy that way. We'll jump back over here and we'll go to edit and paste. Make sure we drag this to the very bottom so we don't hide our text. And we're going to size this up. Now we can do this from the center holding alt or option. And you may wish to drag 
that original image that you use in for reference because we have distorted this and we don't want we don't want our little dude here to be <laughs> to be distorted out of shape. Sometimes you can get away with it if it's a landscape, but if it's a person and their face or their body is all smushed, then probably not. So I'm just going to guess this, but you can take a bit more time and care with yours. There we go. Something like that looks about right. And the text, I'm going to change this to white. There we go. Fantastic. So we have a full screen image. Shrinks down to the laptop. And what I like to do with auto animating, something like this that's a bit more complex, is auto animate as I go. I would rather do that as I go, check it all works, rather than do something incredibly complicated, realize it doesn't work, and then have to try and troubleshoot why it's not working. So with that said, let's go over to prototype mode and we'll set up our animations. So I'm gonna click on this artboard here. Now normally I would use the tap or the click of a mouse as my trigger. However, when we arrive at this second artboard here, we want to have two options to be able to go back or to go forward. So what I'm gonna do is actually drag this to the second artboard and I'm going to use a keys and gamepad trigger. And I'm gonna click here to assign a key and that key is going to be the down arrow key on my keyboard. I'm gonna set this as an auto animate. You can choose your easing. I like ease in out, always a good one. And the duration is half a second. Once I've set that up, I can simply click on the second artboard, drag it to the third, and again, assign that down arrow key. Now what we're gonna do is go all the way back. So start with the third artboard, drag it up, and assign the up arrow key. And then click on the second artboard, go back to the first, and again, assign the up arrow key. So we start here, we go down, down, up, up. So using the arrow keys enables us to go backwards and forwards from the same artboard. So let's just play this. So down, down, up, up, and you can see that image shrinking to fit the screen nicely. And we've got a few more things we need to do. So let's just close that down. Design, okay, good, everything's working. It's always a good start when you're doing a tutorial. So what I'm gonna do is select the laptop and I have the background image here as well. So I can select both of those layers by holding Command or Control and clicking on them. We're gonna copy those and then paste these to the third artboard. And I'm actually going to move this up here. And again, we can just check that this works by playing this. So using the up and down arrow keys, I can move the laptop around. Fantastic. So we've got all the main components working. Now it's just a case of really finessing this and just having text slide in and out with everything else. So what I'm actually going to do is have the Mac OS Macarena text. I'm just gonna copy that and go and paste this on this second artboard and just drag this up here. Now you can see that this moves onto the pasteboard, which isn't very good. Usually when you auto animate two artboards together, it will keep things on the artboard, but if it does that for any reason, just drag it to the very edge of your artboard as far as you can go. And then what we could do is change the opacity to zero. So I can check how this looks here. So you can see that text, it fades up, but seems to transition into the other text. And then what I can do is take this text here. So power is power, Mac OS, Mac Arena. Copy these three bits of text and just paste these onto here. And then maybe have these come up from the bottom. So we'll bring the opacity down on those. Let's see how this looks. Not too bad. Something that isn't working for me and that is looking a little bit janky is how the Mac OS Macarena layers are trying to merge to each other, but they're not. They're looking a bit strange. This is what happens when you auto animate with layers that are the same. So I'm changing font size and everything and it's just it's looking a bit weird. So what I'm gonna do, one way of getting around this 
is we'll just delete all of those auto animates that we just did. I'm going to select both of these, right click and select group. And I'll just call this text dash one. Text dash one. My typing is terrible. And I'll select these ones here, group them together and call these text dash two. Now, because these are both in their own groups, the fact that we have two Mac OS and two Macarena layers is irrelevant because it will auto animate the group instead. So let's try this. We can copy Mac OS Macarena onto the next layer, drag it outside. There we go. So you can see now as I drag it outside, it still stays on that second artboard. So if you do have any trouble before, either go to the edge of the artboard or group things together and then you can drag them outside. So I don't need to adjust the opacity. I'm going to drag this all the way out here. We'll select this group here and bring that down here. Now let's have a look how this animates. Ooh, much smoother. I like that. Fantastic. Okay. So I'm going to grab the laptop. I'm going to move this down as well. Oops, a little bit too far. That's why I've spaced these artboards apart. Just because if something touches the other artboard, it can move it from one artboard to the other, and we don't want that. We'll just make sure that that is at the back. Check how this looks. There we go. So you can see we're making lots of small, subtle changes, but when you put it all together, it really does make for a much better end result. So we have our laptop here. We want this text to slide up along with our laptop. So we'll move this up here. And then this text, this call to action at the bottom, I'm going to group this together. We'll just call that folder CTA. I'll copy this, paste it on the second artboard and drag it down. So with auto animate, it's going to start here, but then when it transitions to this artboard, it's going to move up. And then if we have a look at what it looks like all put together, I can use the down arrow key to go down, to go down, to go up, and then back up to the beginning. And as I say, this is why I use the arrow keys rather than a tap or a click as the trigger, because now I can go from that second artboard, I can just keep going up and down or up and down like this. And one thing I have just noticed is that when we go from here, the image isn't actually shrinking. So as I say, this is why I like to do things one step at a time with auto animate, just in case something does go wrong. Let's try and find out why that isn't working. So we have our background image. We have our background image, and this seems to be the issue. You can see over here, we've got two BG images. So what I could have done differently is name the layers slightly differently. But I think in this case, it would probably be easier to remove that instance of the laptop and the image. Or perhaps actually just remove the image and have the laptop come in. Let's see how that looks. So if you try and auto animate and you have two layers or groups that have the same name, it will just default to a fade transition. That's always a good indicator that something's gone slightly wrong. There we go. So the laptop slides in really subtly and the image transitions to the screen. And there we go. So that's how to create a rather lovely full page animation all in Adobe XD. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you do have any questions or comments, you know what to do, drop those down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.